so these are legal documents of people that sued, attempted to sue my adopted father, a pedophile psychiatrist. You can read this probably. This is a 14-year-old kid. This is another child. If you'll notice it says facts in the legal document. On April 17, 1987, a child was admitted to Fairfax Hospital under the defendant, Dr. Jones. After being admitted to the hospital, the plaintiff fled the facility and attempted to commit suicide by throwing himself in front of a vehicle. So that child tried to get away from my murderous, pedophile, adoptive father. That's how horrible he was, that he was willing to commit suicide to get away from it. The child. He would dope them up and put them on job, drugs and molest them. Here's another actual, this is where he got sued for doping somebody up on drugs like he did me and his patient, Mrs. Berkland, that moved in, that died. And I'm going to get into that later. Here it talks about him overprescribing to me. This is a legal document. You can see the numbers on it. No, he doesn't need it. You just decided that Dr. Tidwell is wrong about what medication Bradley needed? No, he took the white pills in a row and he got dizzy at school. See, he was doping me up and it was affecting my education because I was so doped up at school I could barely pay attention. One day he said he thought that the white pill was too much so it was just gradually, did you take him back to Dr. Tidwell to see if some other medication might be prescribed? She says, she took, the doc, took me to Dr. Tidwell and the doctor said, the child has been symptom free. Dr. Tidwell says, don't bring me a child that is symptom free. He just didn't know about my symptom free about being molested by my pedophile dad. See, that kid was trying to get away from this. That's what that child, when, when that child ran out of that hospital, this is a legal document, when he attempted to commit suicide after seeing my dad in his office, my dad probably got to him right away, probably tried to molest him right off the bat, probably didn't waste any time like he did with me. You see this, this is a legal document. And, and this, this kid, he's committing suicide just to get away from my adoptive father. Almost. And th this is a statement from my mom. I did not want Elwood to start sleeping with Bradley at the apartment. It's a real document. 
Now, I think that Bradley does say that he does sleep with Elwood at the apartment. So I was addicted to drugs and whatnot. Okay, so um, another victim besides me. Um, these are... This is another legal document, and I don't know how well you can read that, but I'm going to read it to you. Physical injuries including permanent disability, great pain and mental anguish, and impairment of the marital and family relationships and his ability and capacity to enjoy life. Severe, he uh, suffered a stroke-like incident and had uh, severe brain damage and was impaired for life from my adoptive father's drugs. This is my mom confronting my adoptive pedophile father in this letter, legal document. I have confronted him and said anything to Dr. Jones about this. What is the strongest thing you have said in that vein? Tell Bradley to go back to his own bed and learn how to sleep in his own bedroom. So I guess the last, well, I, I don't know how many victims there were. I have no idea. I, I imagine there was a lot because he was a child psychiatrist specialized in child psychiatry so he was around kids a lot just like a clown like Dahmer or whoever you know he was around kids a lot see it says right here he had training in child psychiatry so on the outside it looks pretty normal and uh, he had to act down pretty good he acted like a personable guy had a good sense of humor and all that I mean that was the only quality about him was he acted normal and when he was acting normally, he did a good job. He showed like he had a sense of humor and all that stuff. And when you got alone with him, you were, you were dealing with somebody completely different. You know, probably like Ted Bundy's victims or something like that, or Green River Killer. I mean, you, you were dealing with a completely different person, I can tell you. I mean, the only reason he didn't kill me, he, he made attempts uh, when I was around 18. Maybe I'll discuss that later. Uh, when I could actually go after him, but um, I think he uh, probably didn't kill me because they could directly uh, trace it to me and everything, so that's probably the only reason that I'm, I'm alive, but he, he did dope me up pretty bad, a lot. So anyways, uh, those are his credentials, the perfect pedophile, a kid comes in to see the doctor, and uh, he dopes him up and starts molesting him. And he worked for the Orthopedic Hospital, Ch Department of Child Psychiatry, University of Washington. He taught classes at University of Washington. He also t testified for the court. I mean, he had his ass covered. So I, I guess I'll, I'll talk about one of the last victims here that I know about. Um, uh, what happened was uh, he had this patient named Mrs. Birkeland. 
and uh, he was having sexual relations with her and all that stuff. And uh, he was living on the houseboat of 1214 East Hamlin in Seattle, Washington at the time. She was seeing him as a patient, and then she moved into his houseboat. I mean, you think that would be kind of odd. But see, why she moved in was because she was addicted to Demerol. I don't know if you know about Demerol, but it's a really, really addictive narcotic. And he was giving her unlimited amounts of Demerol. And after she had died, I found a bottle of Demerol. And I should have hung on to it that was prescribed directly to her. But if you look up the prescriptions, if you track that. But this is years ago, you know, who cares. But um, this victim didn't live. From my father. This victim didn't make it. Maybe there's other victims that I don't know about, but I know about this one. Houseboat drowning. This is a picture from the newspaper. That's a fireman uh, looking over the edge of a dock. Looking for Mrs. Berkland, the patient that was sleeping with him that moved into his houseboat. This is a statement given to the newspaper from him regarding that incident. A companion told police, see, it's a fucking companion, isn't it? Oh, no, it's not not a fucking patient of his that, that he was fucking fucking, that he fucking murdered because he had a fucking anger problem and he threw her in the water and she was fucking doped up on his drugs. No, no. It was a companion. It doesn't even mention his fucking name. His name was Dr. Elwood L. Jones. That's his fucking name. See, it doesn't even say his name, and it says a companion. It was his fucking patient that he had doped up on drugs. Told police that Miss Berkland had been sitting on the deck at about 11 p.m., when he heard a splash. He said he threw the woman, this is from the newspaper, he said he threw the woman a line when she surfaced. She didn't fucking surface. Are you kidding? She was so fucking doped up on his drugs all the time and alcohol. You ever take fucking, he had me doped up on quaaludes and booze. You ever try swimming on quaaludes and booze? And she couldn't swim. I knew her. And, uh, and she couldn't swim at all. And she would never, ever get that close. I mean, she lived there for years. All of a sudden, she, she drowns off the houseboat. He, he fucking threw her in because he, he used to physically abuse me. Aside from sexually abusing me. He used to physically abuse me. And he says he threw the woman a life preserver. See that? Correction. He threw her ass in. And then she went down again. What, what a good fucking story. He's such a good liar. The, they found the body 40 feet from the place in 10 foot of water. Now, there's not much of a current in Portage Bay. So I don't know how she got 40 feet. She might have been swimming away from him because he was trying to kill her. But all I know is, is that she was murdered. 